Thank you so much for joining us for CBN News Watch. I'm Ephraim Graham. Ahead today, it is the immigration problem you have not heard about in the news. A sharp increase in the number of migrants crossing into the United States at our northern border. We're going to take you to the U.S.-Canada line where there's absolutely no security. It's a side effect of the Supreme Court striking down Roe v. Wade, the increased interest in adoption, including among Christians. The U.S. ordering a partial evacuation from its embassy in the African nation of Niger after a coup recently. And it looks like the mercenary army from Russia, the Wagner Group, may be involved. And in Jerusalem, African Americans march to honor Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and his love for Israel. All these stories and more today on CBN News Watch. This is CBN News Watch. And we want to begin this half hour with a look at the ongoing issue of illegal immigration. The immigration crisis on our southern border has made headlines for years. But far less reported is the fact that authorities along our northern border with Canada are dealing with a surge of their own. CBN's Mark Martin takes us to North Dakota to bring us this first-hand look. Vast open farmland, no fence or wall here, only a marker with the date October 20th, 1818. The day Great Britain and the United States established the boundary between the U.S. and Canadian territories. At more than 5,500 miles, this is the longest non-militarized open border in the world. This particular section is where a part of North Dakota meets Canada. If people wanted to, they could cross here freely. If people wanted to, they could come across at any time. Stuart Symington is mayor of the border city, Nitchi. Do you feel like the northern border is kind of neglected more? There's all this attention on the border in the south. Oh, it's definitely overlooked. Everything's being covered down there. So this is an opening. An opening, Symington says, for migrants wanting to cross the ditch into the U.S. It's a cheap flight from Mexico to to Winnipeg or to Regina and, uh, and then just hop in the skip across the border. And if you have a runner on either side, you've got it made. And then they're dispersed and nobody ever sees them again. A resident of nearby Pembina took us down an abandoned road where we found another open area. I'm here at the U.S.-Canada border. You can see the post reads United States and then over on this side, international boundary. This is just a short distance from the official border crossing, yet there's no security to prevent people from entering the country illegally. According to reports, there has been a sharp increase in the number of migrants illegally crossing into the U.S. Our guide, who wanted to remain anonymous, says it's true. I've just seen um, people in taxis coming over, leaving, people being dropped off, walking. They're not town people, so we know what they're doing. Lance Lohr lives across the river in Minnesota. I hunt just in Minnesota here, and I see suitcases and cell phones and stuff all over dropped. They just don't care. Yeah, I think they should be a little heavier... Uh, Patrol. U.S. Customs and Border Protection back up these reports of a dramatic increase. So far from last October through May of this year, stats show more than 115,000 encounters. Even with four months left in the fiscal year, that number already surpasses the yearly amount in each of the previous three years. Here in the Grand Forks sector, covering just North Dakota and Minnesota, the number of encounters is already more than double last fiscal year. North Dakota State Senator Yana Murdahl blames the federal government for the increase, accusing the Biden administration of giving up American sovereignty by giving up the border to illegal crossings. We are advertising to the world that we're open without any control, without any due process, without any legal uh, way of doing it. It doesn't matter. You get awarded if you can jump, swim or run, right, to get into the country, you get awarded by the same rights as a citizen has. Probably people think they got a lot better chance of sneaking across this northern border than they do the southern border. Symington believes a tighter southern border will lead to more crossing attempts up here. And the more they hear that our country's open, um, the more the, that's going to get people to come. And the sad part is you'll find in the northern part of the border, especially in the wintertime, people die. Winter here, if it's 30 below or worse and you get 50, 60 below wind chill, it is deadly. Even a mile walk can be deadly. So about a year and a half ago, we had a family from India that was muled through, and they were told that north of the border, about two miles, it was just two miles, just go cross. And a few days later, they were found frozen in the snowbanks up there. And there is potential danger for these border residents as well. 
Now, I think some of the, the biggest issues are uh, people coming into the United States that we truly don't want here. You know, these are people of an organized crime from other countries, people who are perhaps have uh, nefarious reasons for coming. Uh, maybe they're a spy of a foreign nation. There are drugs coming in. Families are worried about, you know, what's being brought into the school. I know our law enforcement has seen a great increase in, in fentanyl trafficking and, and even deaths in Walsh County. CBN News reached out to U.S. Customs and Border Protection about a solution to this issue. They declined our interview request and gave us this statement. A CBP spokesperson said, CBP deploys a mixture of personnel, technology, infrastructure, and partnerships appropriate to protect our country's northern border from irregular migration, narcotics, and other illegal activity unique to this operating environment. Migrants should not listen to the lies of smugglers and make the dangerous journey only to be sent back. I know they use drones and other technology and they do an excellent job, but it's too vast of an area to control completely. Federal legislation to establish a center to coordinate northern border security is in the works. But North Dakota State Representative David Monson says that's not enough. Our country is like a sieve. Our borders are wide open, except when you try to come across legally. Munson told us U.S. leaders in this day and age need to step it up at all our borders when it comes to tightening security. Mark Martin, CBN News, on the border of North Dakota and Canada. Coming up, we're going to take a look at the implications from last year's major Supreme Court ruling overturning Roe versus Wade that has led to an upsurge in interest in adoption, including among Christians. We'll have that story for you and more when we come back. We're going to take a look now at the implications from a major political issue, abortion. It's been a year since the United States Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade, and since then we're seeing an increased interest in a related issue, adoption. Charlene Aaron brings us this look at new trends on adoption among Christians. Before the historic court action, statistics showed Christians already more likely to adopt than other Americans. Now they are stepping up at an even bigger rate to grow their families and help children in need. Since Dobbs' decision last June, we've definitely seen the church raise up and say we want to be available for adoption and foster care. Herbie Newell serves as president and executive director of Lifeline Children Services, one of the largest evangelical adoption agencies in the country. We've seen the pro-life community really embrace the idea of adoption in ways that, that really it, we haven't for the last 49 years. I, I feel like we were so targeted on ending abortion that we kind of failed at times to look at what are the options that a woman has on the life side. This all comes at a time Newell says the battle over adoption has never been greater. Adoption has become a lot tougher, both domestically and internationally. Organizations have either compromised or exited child welfare altogether because of how difficult it is to stand firm to a biblical ethic of marriage and family in the world of child welfare today. When the pandemic hit in 2020, border closings and lockdowns forced many countries to shut down their foreign adoption programs. An impact Newell points out that's still being felt today. China has just now started to allow families to travel again for kids that were matched to them in 2019 before the pandemic began. And so certainly we need to call our state representatives, our senators, we need to advocate for these kids that have been matched to come home. Back in the U.S., Newell says pro-life pregnancy centers must adjust to the changing face of abortion. We need to make sure is that we're not just reaching the woman who's going to come into our clinic who's looking for a medical abortion, but they were able to get in almost real time connection with women who are seeking chemical abortion. And we need women to know that there's a reversal pill. This is really the face of crisis pregnancy, and it means that we're having to revolutionize the way that we look at reaching young women who are in that crisis. That includes single women facing an unplanned pregnancy. What that woman needs is not an abortion. That woman needs a community of that's going to mentally and spiritually support her, wrap around her, and help her be able to accomplish her goals and her dreams while also bringing life to a child. 
Meanwhile, Lifeline is recruiting kids to help make a difference through an initiative called Stand for Orphans, an idea started by kids for kids who need families. And my son, who was about eight or nine at the time, said, you know what, Dad, if, if we could get a thousand kids to do lemonade stands, the $20 we made yesterday would turn into $20,000. The next thing you knew, that summer, that first summer, they had raised over $100,000 for orphans and vulnerable children around the world. I took a stand, and you can too. Since that first summer, nearly $400,000 have been raised, and it's expanding as churches across the country are including the idea in their vacation Bible schools. Charlene Aaron, CBN News. The U.S. Navy sent four destroyers after it was discovered Russia and China had 11 military ships operating near the Aleutian Islands. The development reported by Alaska's two senators over the weekend. Senator Dan Sullivan saying it's yet another reminder that we have entered into a new era of authoritarian aggression led by dictators in Beijing and Moscow. Turning now to another major international development involving Russia, despite the aborted the aborted uprising against Vladimir Putin, a Russian mercenary army continues to create havoc in Africa. The private army known as the Wagner Group has gone quietly, has not gone quietly into the night. There are suspicions the Putin-backed mercenaries helped stage a military coup in the West African nation of Niger, the unrest causing the U.S. to order a partial evacuation of its embassy. Dale Hurd is on this story. Chaos is spreading in Western Africa after Niger was taken over by a military government last week. Seen waving throughout the capital were Russian flags. One was even put atop the French embassy, which had to be evacuated after it was attacked. The U.S. has also ordered a partial evacuation of its embassy. The Russian flags are a clear sign that Niger and a number of African nations have a new ally. While the Wagner Group's status in Russia remains unclear after its failed uprising against the Russian military leadership, Vladimir Putin is still using Wagner mercenaries to change the political landscape in Africa for Russia's benefit. Already on the streets of Niamey in the capital, people have been outside waving Russian flags, saying that they welcome Wagner, they want Russia to come, and they want the French to leave. Yevgeny Prigozhin's Wagner Group is operating in several African nations. And where Wagner goes, trouble usually follows. These surveillance photos from the French military show Wagner mercenaries burying bodies in Mali, where it's believed to have massacred more than 500 people last year. The Russian private army known for its atrocities in Ukraine and designated a transnational criminal organization by the U.S. government has taken its dirty work to Africa, where it offers its services to a number of governments, expanding Kremlin influence on the continent. South African Wagner expert Pauline Back says the Russian mercenaries only go where they're invited providing services African leaders want. It's not that Wagner just comes in and rolls into a country and does whatever it wants. It does this with the approval uh, and often you know, the blessing of the ruling elites. It provides a private security to the people in power, offering military training to the army. It's uh, basically an organized crime syndicate that is operating on behest of the Russian government. Retired FBI Special Agent Eric Karen is a security consultant for several African nations. They're essentially Russians KGB, operating throughout Africa, committing crimes, committing murder. Western Africa now faces a possible war after a coalition of West African states vowed to restore Niger's president to power, while Mali and Burkina Faso vowed to defend the new military government. At the recent Russia-Africa summit in St. Petersburg, the military leader of Burkina Faso seemed very pleased to have his photo taken with Vladimir Putin. Whether there will be war or peace in Africa, the new winner is Russia. Typified by signs held by protesters in Niger that say, down with France, long live Putin. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Still ahead, we're going to take you to Jerusalem, where African Americans marched recently to honor Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and his love for Israel. We're going to bring you that story. It's coming up right after this.
Several hundred African Americans recently traveled to Jerusalem to march down Martin Luther King Street, the city's tribute to the American civil rights leader. The participants wanted to both honor King's love of Israel and show they're carrying it forward. CBN's Chris Mitchell brings us the story. King and his wife visited Israel in 1959, and he had hoped to return in 1968 with thousands of his people. His plan was to bring about 3,000 African Americans, and he had 600 that signed up right away. And uh, unfortunately, he was killed before he could come. Now, 55 years later, that same number joined it here to march and to help fulfill his dream. Lift every voice and sing. It's really kind of a prophetic sign for us, you know, just to see that exact number being fulfilled now in 2023. So it's amazing. We're standing here literally at Martin Luther King Street in Jerusalem. Most folks have no idea, not only that there's a Martin Luther King Street, but that he was so pro-Israel. In what would be his final speech, King also referred to his Israel's border visit, connecting America's civil rights struggle to the Israelites entering the promised land. I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I've looked over. And I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you. But I want you to know the night that we as a people will get to the promised land. A Jerusalem deputy mayor pointed out the event's amazing timing and that this same week, Jews studied in the Torah about Moses leading his people to the promised land, but did not get to join them. Moses took the Jewish people, the Israelites, to the border of Israel, but did not get to go in with them himself. And that connects to Dr. Martin Luther King. And he went on to say that he may not get there with us, but we as a people, will get to the promised land. And here we are, having just walked down Martin Luther King Street in Jerusalem. It's not a coincidence that you're here, that you, all of you are here on this ground. Everyone that I've talked to that came in my group of hundreds of people have told me that they felt summoned here. It was almost like something was pulling them to come at this specific time, and we all know who that someone was. I believe that that was the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, literally summoning his people. What an amazing day this is. Or truly, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing in it. I love the fact that these incredible spiritual leaders from the black community in the United States and around the world are here in solidarity, in love, in showing us their support on Martin Luther King Jr. Street. Let us march on till victory is won. Black America loves you. Yes. Black America standing with you. Yes. We are praying for the peace of Jerusalem yes. by the tens of millions. Yes. And so uh, we're, we're thrilled to be able to carry this message to Israelis. I am so grateful that Dr. Coretta Scott King knew the heart that her husband had for Israel, and she continued that work. And just to have the women here uh, in the land it's so amazing because now we can teach our children, we can share with our children the importance of, or the significance of blessing Israel. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Martin Luther King Street, Jerusalem. Coming up, the heat wave that's hit the United States has also been afflicting the rest of the world, leading to major forest fires in Turkey where earthquakes hit earlier this year. We're going to see how CBN's Operation Blessing has been on the scene to help. We've got that story for you when we come back. Stay with us. On October 1st, 1961, history was made when a tiny station began transmitting the first signals of the Christian Broadcasting Network. CBN, the Christian Broadcasting Network. And now, a new era has begun with the all-new CBN News Channel. Just moments ago, the Iron Dome intercepted an incoming rocket 
right on the Gaza border. Administering in this area, spiritual warfare is definitely involved. A 24-7 news network, bringing you the news you want from a source you can trust. In Kenya, 40% of the medical services are actually provided by these Christian hospitals. Let's talk about the economy. Believers here are joining together to win people to Jesus Christ. All your favorite shows now in one place, all day, every day. The CBN News Channel. Download the app or visit CBNNewsChannel.com. CBN News. The heat wave that has struck the United States and other countries has also led to other natural disasters, and CBN's Operation Blessing is on the scene in Turkey. Temperatures have hit 113 degrees, igniting a series of forest fires in the mountains. Homes have been reduced to ruins, and many cars have been lost in the same area where families were hit by earthquakes in early February. Operation Blessing quickly deployed crucial provisions, including water, food, and essential supplies to help the forest police as they fight the blazes. And Operation Blessing is offering medicine to assist burn victims, along with masks to help people breathe amid the choking smoke. The team's deployment manager thanking partners for allowing them to provide supplies and the love of Jesus. You can find out more about what Operation Blessing is doing around the world by going to, and right here in the United States, by visiting OB. Org. It is time now for your Monday motivation, and here's a thought to consider as we begin another week together. You are going to get the win. Just take your focus off the when it is going to happen and trust God to do it. He's going to do it in time, on time, and most importantly, in His time. And that indeed is the perfect time. With that word, I encourage you to make this a marvelous Monday and have yourself a wonderful rest of the week. That will do it for this edition of CBN News Watch. You can always find more of our programs on the CBN News Channel. You can find them there at any time as well as online, cbnnews.com. We'd love to know what you think about the stories you've seen here today or any day. You can email us at the address right there at the bottom of your screen, newswatch at cbn.com. And of course, you can reach out and touch us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We look forward to seeing you right back here, same time tomorrow. Goodbye and God bless.